In his prime, Diego Sanchez was considered by many as one of the most electrifying fighters within the UFC. Known for his brawler characteristics and damage-first approach, the Nightmare was an immediate fan favorite within the organization. Being to protect the fighter when they can't defend himself, he nailed him. Sanchez was never in a boring fight, and his lust for fighting was always present. However, how did he go from one of Dana White's favorites to a troubled fighter? Diego Sanchez's last fight in the UFC showed the nightmare as a shell of himself, and fans were worried. How had Sanchez lost himself that much? In comes Joshua Fabia, a self-help guru that was relatively unknown in the MMA media scene. To understand a little bit of Sanchez's downfall, it's crucial to understand who he is as a person. In his past, Sanchez was betrayed by his close friends for money he invested with him, having lost upwards of $100,000. For a UFC fighter at the time, that was a lot of money. And due to his trustworthy and humble personality, he could be easily manipulated by wrong parties. And those around Sanchez truly knew he was a good person, always seeking to help. A primary example of this was Diego Sanchez taking on a special needs fighter whose dream was to face the nightmare inside the UFC octagon. Of course, Sanchez played with the man and even let him win the fight, showing that the man was not only tremendously skilled, but also a great fighter. Sanchez was respected by many, and his downfall in the sport of mixed martial arts was perhaps the most disappointing element of it all. Diego Sanchez trained under the Jackson Wink Gym for the development of his career, and this is when he thrived the most. As we all know, Jackson Wink built champions like Holly Holm and the GOAT himself, John Jones. Training under the careful guidance of Greg Jackson, Diego Sanchez became a more technical fighter and overall developed his game, both during camps and during fights. After getting brutally finished by Matt Brown, Diego Sanchez was looking for a change in the way he approached his fights. He's gonna look for that elbow! He's out! Referee steps in! This is the time Sanchez met Joshua Fabia, a self-help guru, who claimed to have experiences in the martial arts, despite little to no evidence. Before his bout with Mickey Gall, Sanchez approached Fabia for mental clarity and for guidance. However, he wasn't truly immersed in the camp, as he had only met Sanchez for one week. In outstanding fashion, Mickey Gall got knocked out by Diego Sanchez, and people were now curious about a new run by Sanchez. Very good luck at Mickey Gall. And he's flattened out here. This could be the end. This could be it. It's not looking good, I'll tell you that, Joe. It's not looking good. This is this it. Is it. This is over. it. That's it. Diego Sanchez! Even Joe Rogan was impressed by the way Sanchez looked in his last fight, at an older age, and still messing his opponents up. Bro. First of all, bro. Let's, let's start with Diego motherfucking Sanchez. All these young guns sleeping on Diego Sanchez. Fully redeemed himself. Do not sleep. Do not. Just do not. Just don't, because he will fuck people up still. This win proved to many that Sanchez was legit. However, one small problem had been birthed from all this, and that problem was put simply that Joshua Fabia was going out in public, claiming that he was the reason Sanchez won this fight. Now at the time, no one really knew who Joshua Fabia was, and hearing these bold claims was somewhat concerning. Sanchez would explain that he no longer felt he was getting the deserved attention at Jackson Wink, and now needed a more secluded coach. When videos began surfacing of the training footage of Fabia's camp, People were insanely confused as to what was going on. It seemed as if Fabia was toying with Sanchez instead of actually training him. And with his next opponent being Michael Chiesa, many were worried about how Fabia would perform. All the while, Fabia went on a media tour claiming that he had even thought Sanchez a deadly choke, going as far to warn the sports commission about it. Labeled the death choke, some officials became concerned. However, the fight would go as planned and people were hopeful that Fabia's antics would in fact help him in the fight. Considering Fabia's training included running away from him as he yielded a knife, the expectations were somewhat low, and many were rightfully concerned about it. The fight itself was a horrible sight to see, as Chiesa would dominate Sanchez through the larger part of three rounds. Watching the fight, many pointed their fingers at Fabia as the culprit for the matter, and he quickly became an enemy in the eyes of many MMA fans. Many wished the experiment between Fabia and Sanchez would end right here, but unfortunately, we would be all very wrong. Now at this point, 
it is where it all got ugly, as Joe Rogan began calling out Fabia as a fake, and Fabia being the egomaniac he was, would not shut up either. Dude, what technique? Comes an elbow. Oh, come on, son, show me that. Oh, oh knocking people out. Bro, oh, so good. Imagine looking at this guy and go, listen, <laughs> fuck Longo and Sarah. That's where I need to be. That would be... It was so bad, it came to the point where Fabia intervened in a media meeting to berate a bunch of media members, claiming they weren't depicting Sanchez, or more importantly, himself correctly. Real, real quick, guys, just because you don't know who the hell I am, and you guys heard a lot of shit talk and all the good stuff. Let's just cut the bullshit on commentating. No low blows on this guy. No trying to turn the narrative that he's fucking up his legacy and all that weird stuff. Let's just keep it fair. You want some video? Contact me and I'll send it to you. We could tell that Sanchez felt lethargic in his next fight, and his movement was compromised and the damage brought on by Pereira was certainly piling up. Of course, many were in doubt about Fabia's questionable theories in the corner. Listen carefully. You are stopping your motion. Do not wait to see your work. I need forward, forward pressure. I need you to get off the line before you attack. Think of the shadow, shadow. I need you to get in, okay? Get in, get behind. If it gets, gets tight, get sticky, take them to the ground. Get on top, give me some ride time, give me some ground and pound. It was evident that this fight was not going the way of the nightmare, and it was looking like a second loss for the Fabia camp. Push up ahead against the side of the octagon, doing something. Oh, that body shot hurt him a little bit. Again off his feet now, Sanchez has a seat. When it seemed Pereira was going to finish Sanchez, he'd land an illegal knee, potentially bailing out both Sanchez and Fabia. Oh, I made him. That hurts Sanchez eats a knee up top and another one. That body shot into the body, Sanchez hanging on here. With that being said, Jason Herzog would call the fight off as Sanchez was unable to continue, and in an unfortunate way, he'd collect a win. The criticism towards Fabia continued after this bout, and people were at one point concerned that the damage would be irreversible. EPI, Forrest Griffin, and all these guys are all helping him. All against just little old me, and nobody's saying, wow, it's kind of amazing. It seemed that everywhere Fabia would go, Criticism would follow him, and it was an absolute disgusting train wreck, with no focus being displayed towards Sanchez. On a camera, like you're disdain with me so much, you can't even say my name, bro. Like Dude, that's kind of, that's kind of cold. Like, I don't... Sanchez's next fight would perhaps be the worst one to date, as he seemingly showed up with no preparation. He essentially showed up to the fight as fat, slow, and unprepared, and we would soon see why. After what was a complete battery by Jake Matthews, training footage of the Fabia camp would be leaked, and what we saw was shocking. Fabia would use Sanchez as a body bag, claiming that was preparation for his fights, and this is when the boiling pot started to really bubble. At this point, Fabia was claiming the UFC was putting Diego to fight in disadvantageous situations, claiming they knew he had CTE and still allowed him to fight. Fabia began dropping outstanding accusations towards Dana White and even started a lawsuit, which Sanchez later admitted would profit Fabia in 50%. Why is nobody talking about that the reckoning happened and somehow Dana White gets to fuck fighters? How many female fighters has he had sex with? Sanchez and Fabia were getting embarrassed during this lawsuit, which ultimately led to Diego leaving the promotion, despite Dana White still liking him. Fabia and Sanchez would ultimately break off as Sanchez realized Fabia was a public embarrassment, and even Cowboy Cerrone claimed to see Fabia get his shit rocked in a bar fight. I do know the guy that whipped his ass at the bar. I used to train with the guy, and that kid was talking about his death punch and how he was going to kill the dude. My dog, my buddy dog walked his motherfucking ass all over the bar, so uh, the death punch did not work. It was unsuccessful. The president himself claimed that Diego will always have his open support, despite all the nonsense that is going on. I fucking cried. I fucking cried for this fucking company. I fucking sacrificed more than you will ever know. Luckily, Sanchez realized that Fabia's plan was one that involved mental manipulation and that the end goal was simply to make money from the UFC. Sanchez last fought Kevin Lee under the Eagle FC banner in 2022, and it seems that his career is dwindling away. Kevin Lee continuing to work, guys. 
The nightmare may have had a very turbulent end to his career, but that doesn't change the fact his contributions to the sport were very impactful. As always, please don't forget to drop us a like and to subscribe to our channel.